G'day and welcome back for more Space Engineer Survival. I was hoping to get the tram started today, but I think there are a couple of things I should do in preparation of building the proper battery transfer tram between the solar axe and the main base. And that it kind of involves the things that are going to allow me to park this tram off the main line. Something I'm going to do on my way up to the solar axe is improve our rail line. Right now we've got the problem where, if I go a little bit further along, you can see these voxels come down just a bit too far on the upper rail and there's areas where that's a problem on the lower rail too. There's also a problem that because these drills are so far out in front, as the tram turns round a corner, it tends to dig out more on the outer edge of the corner than on the inner side, meaning that places on the tram that might be a bit fatter if they're in the middle might end up being a problem later. And we don't really need that, so I think what we will do to solve that particular problem is to put a pair of drills in the middle of the tram. I want to leave the ones that are on the front there because this tram I'm going to hopefully use in order to dig the rail line to the silo. So, to get a drill in here, we go one, two, and maybe three, I think. Come down a couple. Let's see where this puts us. If we Can we put a drill in there? Yes. So if we have a drill there, how much lower than the front drills are there? Is that? One, two, yeah, that's probably about right. Then for our upper drill, and I can place these drills safely this way because they do not drill their own grid. And that is slightly higher than the front as well. Perfect. I don't need these two. And then I'll match that with two drills on the other side in the same position. I had to push these ones out just a bit further, so maybe I should push this out a bit further too. The top ones had to be out a bit further because Otherwise, this was going to get in the way. Alrighty, so those drills should help us out. Let's load up the cargo with everything we need as well in order to build the upgrades to the elevator. Another thing I will do is load up with all of my filled hydrogen bottles. In fact, I think I could probably fill up my personal ones too, since that is something I so rarely remember to do. It might be a nice change. Alrighty, let's head off and let's get a camera view that we can see what's going on. If I start drilling now, we should end up with clearing out a bit more space. I think I need to zoom back a bit. Not a huge amount at the beginning here because I did this bit initially with the four, but there we go. Now we're seeing a bit of extra clearance. One thing that might be worrying some of you is that if I drill out the tracks that aren't yet supported, that they will drop. That's actually not a problem. I'm sort of disappointed that it's not a problem, to be honest. But with how things are at the moment, if you have a station grid and you disconnect it from the ground, it often does not fall. Sometimes it does, and I haven't worked out the exact conditions under which it does, and I don't think my upwards pointing ones drill high enough. I'm going to have to fix that. My lower ones definitely do. But what's happening is, say that I completely detached this grid from the voxels, it would still just float there like it was still attached. I think until I interact with it, but I'm not sure exactly what sort of interaction you have to do with it in order to get it to drop. Yeah, that's better. Now we're getting some roof space. Use our little menu trick to keep the drills on. And off we go up to the solar axe. What I will do after I've cleared out this extra volume in the tunnel is I will go back through and add an extra block to secure each section of track to the voxels just in case they don't stay floating forever. It would be a bad risk to take <laughs> and then to drive along and find that the track is gone. So here we go. As we turn around this right bend, you can see that it's quite a big chunk taking out of the right. 
not quite so much taking out of the left. It's not quite as clear on that turn. I think it'll be more obvious when we get up to the solar axe and start doing things with its curve. Because those curves are a lot tighter. And zoom, 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 away we go! Okay, here we go. Here's a tight corner. You can see there's quite a big chunk being taken out of the left. And a much smaller chunk being moved out of the right. As we go through. And for longer tram cars, it's important that we do clear out enough space that they won't scrape against those walls. Because I'm not sure how wide the ultimate tram car, the finishing tram cars is actually going to end up being. Now some of you I'm sure when I was talking about the static grids being converted into active ones when they get detached from voxels were thinking, well of course, now you just have to turn them into ship grids. Not always, which is weird. There are some conditions where chunks of a build will drop off when you detach them. But then there's other conditions where they won't. And I haven't worked out the difference between those two situations yet. I think the way I arrange these drills though, even when I'm... Let's go down to a straighter section. It doesn't look like I'll actually have to worry too much about these having been disconnected from the voxels anyway. Most of them seem, well most of these ones seem to have been stuck to it anyway when I've drilled through here by hand, which is why this divot is here. Let's have a look here. Yeah, most of these I think are still connected to the voxels. Excellent. I do like the tunnel being a bit wider. Makes the track look a bit more... What's the word I'm looking for? It's more prominent when you shoot down here with the light kind of pops out a bit more which is the sort of thing that I like for the goose we've got a turntable to store our extra trailers we could certainly go for a turntable here the challenge with a turntable for the tram though is it's got a lot less flexibility in terms of how it's going to connect up to the grid that it's going to charge from and the trams are going to charge from the solar axe that means we would probably only be able to set up 90 degree turns on the turntable if we were going to use it for the tram. Or we would have to, in each parking spot, put a connector on a rotor attached to various other bits and pieces in order to try and get it to work that way. Which, ugh, ugh, horrible. Don't want to do that. So, what I'm actually thinking of doing is using the pistons that we've got in order to create parking spots. So, like I was talking about in terms of using this piston here to push the track over a bit in order to start the line for the silo, we can do the same if we come up uh, probably this far. Have some tracks coming off this end, tracks coming off this end, or actually possibly just one end because it's going to be hard to get this to slot between blocks in a way that we can cross. So probably just tracks off one end. That's still fine, because we could have trams stored one here, and then shift across, and there could be some more cars stored down on this second bit. And I reckon we could probably get three or more layers in before we get to the top. In order to get this system to work where we've got the pistons pushing things across, we're actually going to have to use scripts to control the pistons. Like the script we use on the turntable to set the rotor to move to certain angles, we need a script that tells the pistons to move to certain angles when we want to be at certain floors. So we're going to need to use a script to direct the pistons to go to particular spots and hold there. Now you could use the minimums and maximums except for the fact that I need these pistons to usually go to three or more positions. So that doesn't really work. If we'd planned ahead, we could have had a certain number of pistons that reached the second floor, third floor, etc. and been able to control them that way. And I think one of the scripts I looked at would have worked if we'd tried it that way. Unfortunately, that's not how we're going to be able to do it because we've got so many pistons. The way I'm going to do things is actually less efficient, but if someone has a script that works, 
that uh, I haven't managed to find that can do this in a more efficient way, please tell me. I'll be quite happy to change this system up. Because what I'm going to need to do is build an awful lot of programmable blocks. Don't know that I need this many timer blocks, but we'll just put that in for now. So we'll have a very large server farm sort of set up down here <laughs> so that we can get this working. And the script that I'm going to use is by Captain Twinkie. He's got a couple of awesome scripts on the workshop. The other one of his that I've used is the one that's controlling, big surprise, the turntable for the goose. And I'm really glad that these scripts exist because they allow me to do controls a way that makes sense for my brain and also works really nicely with the transmit receive script. So this will be SAPB uh, tram elevator and this one is going to control the elevator's position in Y. So this will be Y1 pay. Because we're going to need to set these up to control the tram in the X, Y, and Z directions. And if I've done these X, Y's, and Z's in ways that you don't like, I don't think I can change it. <laughs> it's what's going to make sense to me. So I'm leaving it. And this will be Y2 for the moment. So Y1A will be the one that lines up here. Y1B will be the one that lines up to our future parking track. Now our parking track off to the side here is going to need to be attached to our main grid for the solar axe so that it has power and can deliver power to the tram because we want to put a connector on there so the tram can get recharged at this end. So what I'm going to do is bring across, and I realize I'm getting distracted from the program of blocks, but I thought this would actually be important to do before I start it. So I'm going to bring this across underneath the other track, and the row that we need to come up to the sur up to have the track on will be uh, pistons from there, so it can go out one block, two blocks, three blocks, and then it should be able to be on this one. Let me just check that because I feel like I did that wrong. No, that's fine. Then, so that it's about the same height as this track here, I think we'll bring it up a couple of blocks and then put our half track down. So that'll be where that track starts. Now, let's grab the Ugly Duckling and drill out a bit of space so we have something to work with. See, it wasn't just laziness that made me leave it here. It was actually sensible. Okay, drill out a bit of space for the track. Since the drills on the tram are the wrong way around. And that means we are going to need a turntable. I just don't think it's going to be part of the elevator. Because we will need a way to turn around unidirectional trams like the one we've got there. I suppose I could add, go and add some drills to the rear and make it omnidirectional. And that may actually be easier than building a whole turntable and try and make all of my trams omnidirectional. But I think we may just build a, turn, a reversing turntable at some point. I'm expecting I'm going to put some walls in down here, which is why I'm not worrying so much about how carefully I drill things out. Probably walls with lots of windows, like the passageway up in the... well, up toward the future. Jeez, those living quarters I planned a long time ago. Future living quarters back in the main base. So that's where our track's got to get to. That's where our elevator's got to get to so that we can drive onto this bit of track. Let's put the top half in as well. All right, let's start setting these things up. So what I've done is I've named all of the pistons and I've named all of the programmable blocks so that we can command them later with the timer blocks. What we've got is the piston that moves left, right, named with X, forward, back, named with Z, and all seven of the ones that go up and down, named with Y. First off, let's have a look at our X piston and see what position it is in to line up with that track. So it's at one. So the X1 position will be one meter. And that is this timer block, this programmable block. So we go edit, we've got our script here. We've got our name of our elevator piston here. And our extension is going to be one. The velocity to get there, let's leave that at one. Click okay. And if we click run, Basically nothing will happen because that piston is already in the correct position. But if we have a look at our piston now, we'll see 
that its maximum distance and minimum distance are both set to 1, and its velocity is set to 1, which is the velocity that we set in the script. So regardless of which side it starts from, its velocity will move it toward that and get stopped. So it'll be locked in that position, which is perfect. Now this one, our Z one, is at position is at one meter as well. Okay. So Z one is down here. And up our script. Twinky. Okay. Put in our piston name. Piston Z. Let's get rid of these other ones. Okay. And now we get to the more interesting ones. Because we've got all of these pistons down here, and this position that they are currently in will be our 1A position. And we need to have two different level 1 positions because that other track is slightly offset from where we're at. But, so I'm going to call this one 1A and the other one 1B. So let's go with edit, again grab Twinkie script. But this time we've actually got to put in the names of every single piston. So paste that and it'll be Y1, Y7. So that's all of our pistons. Now the extension we need set. We can find that out. Currently, I've got one piston extended. The rest of them are collapsed. So if we have a look at how far this one is extended, it's 2.2 meters. We can go into this one, go edit. We can go double set extension, 2.2. Our desired velocity for this one is probably higher than that, but I'm going to leave it at 1 now, just to show you what's going to happen. When I click Run, our pistons are actually going to move. But our track shouldn't move much. Unless I did something wrong. Maybe I did something wrong. Ah, I think I know what's going on. <laughs> so I had to fiddle with that a bit, but now we've got it working as it's supposed to. Basically what's happened is, the distance of 2.2 meters and the velocity of 1 has been divided amongst each piston. So velocity 0.14 and maximum distance 0.31. Let's see if that's still right. Maybe we'll go a little bit higher because that's still a bit of a bump. So that I can ride the lift as I press stuff. So build a control panel over here. Go timer block. Grab our first timer block and we go... Set up actions and do 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 do. We need to have X1 run with default, Y1A run with default, and Z1 run with default. There we go. So that will mean that we could then press this, get our TB, trigger now, and if we were moved out of this position, when I hit this button, we would line up with this piece of track. All of the pistons will move toward this point. That's not going to be ideal later, but for now it's going to work. Next up, we need to set up each of these pistons so that they align over to this piece of track. I think it's pretty close to 10. Oh, I thought I was one block off. Don't know why, how I was counting that wrong, but... Just had that feeling I was one block too far. There were probably more than a couple of you groaning at my ineptitude there. <laughs> oh well. So, we are now... Pretty close. First and then go back out. Stop at 9.8. Yeah, cool. Now we got to adjust the vertical height. And I think... We need to come down about... Maybe almost a meter from where we're at. So instead of doing that manually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the script from in here. Copy all that because it's got all the piston names. Go into our other programmable block, edit. Replace everything that's in here, control A, control V. And then, instead of having this at 2.3, let's set it to 1.3. Okay, and run. And look at that. That's pretty good. Then we just got to set up our Z. Double set extension, 1.8. We're going to want it to get there relatively slowly compared to the other speeds. 
And the reason for that is we're going to be pushing the track forward. If the track is currently aligned to here and we push it forward too fast, this edge at the center of the screen now will catch on this edge at the center of the screen now. Not ideal. We want it to move back to this position quickly, but move over to that position slowly. And now what we can do is go back to our button panel. So name timer block two. Let's go elevator silo. This one will use X2, run with default, Y1B, run with default, and Z2. There we go, we've got our timer block on our control panel. So let's hit, let's hop up on the track so we can see a bit more. Hit that. And look at that. Working like a dream. Let's hit number two. Clang, clang, clang. Not good, not good, not good, not good. Uh, we need to adjust those speeds. <laughs> that did not work out. All right. So to get into the X2 position, which is this one. No, that's X1. This is this one. We want to get... Oh, we don't have an X2 position set. Well, that would explain a lot. That's why everything broke. <laughs> I forgot to set up the second left-right position. <sighs> Let's try those buttons again. No, so close. Oh wait, were we catching on the ground then? Oh no, we shouldn't have been because we got over there before. Uh, so what we need now is... I think we need to slow down the Z2. Let's try it again. Third time's a charm. Yeah! Look at that. Then we'll slowly move in. Oh, need to repair this. It got damaged. <laughs> awesome! Haha! -ha. Success! Much success. Let's move the ugly duckling out of the way so that we can then try and get this tram in. I wonder how this will work. Or if this will work okay. If I go... Dirt, dirt. There. That's about the same height. I reckon this will work well enough. This is going to be such a dodgy solution, but I think this will... Kind of fit with the design of this tree. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking of doing. I'll put a drill each way on the backs of these other drills. And I think that'll allow me to reverse into that spot. Sure, I can't weld, but... At least it can do the rest. There we go. It's getting harder and harder to get into the cockpit. Let's head on to the elevator. I mean, because I don't have the remote set up for the solar axe just yet. It is something I should really do. And we hit number two. I hop in the tram. Then we reverse. Realizing that I don't have enough track there. <gasps> I just had a realization. It's going to be so much easier to automatically build the track for the silo. And I can't believe I hadn't thought about this before. Basically, the big issue with drilling and welding is that the rocks fall down and you're in the way. But I'm going to be drilling downhill towards the silo. So for much of that track, it's going to be really easy because all of the rocks are going to roll toward where the drills are and away from the welders. Oh, that's going to make life so much easier. So there you go. Another tip. If you're going to be making a tram the way that I, a tram line the way that I have, try and drill from high to low ground. All right, almost far enough. I think I've got a couple more blocks to do. This is quite slow progress. In fact, I might be able to speed up the progress a little bit. Alright, is that far enough that the drills are out of the way of the elevator? Yep. So let's do this simple thing. Move forward a little bit. We place a full block here. A connector here. We're going to be able to... We are going to be able to charge our tram 
at this end. Lock and charge. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Look at that. We have a parking spot for the tram. We have a new tram line started. Even though that connector is not going to be staying there because that's going to be very much in the way. Although, I suppose I could have the thing loop around, but no, I'm not going to do that. That's excessive and unnecessary, which is totally nothing that I ever do. All right, let's move this back to the first position. Then we need to set up our top position. Based. And the reason I tend to jump between these physically is it's actually much quicker to do that than to search through the control panel. Now, our extension. The top position for this elevator is pretty near the maximum extension. The maximum extension is 70. But if I type in 75, just to demonstrate, let's show what happens. A whole lot of bubkis because it's outside the range of the pistons that are there. Now, if we set this to, let's say, 63. Okay. And run. It's going to go up really quite slowly. So it's going to take a full minute to get up there since it's traveling at one meter per second. But this will get us all the way up. Let's increase the speed of this. That's something that I've noticed with this script, and that's sort of why I wanted to do it. Because I just hit run while it was working. It's now gotten itself a little bit confused. But if we press it again, it should be fine. Or not. Or I've broken it. What if I hit reverse? Yeah, there we go. Hit reverse and it's all good. Because what happens whenever you activate it is it seems to reverse the pistons from their current position. Which might create us some issues in the future. I'm not sure. I'm hopeful we'll be okay, but we may find some challenges getting from one position to another, depending on where we started. I haven't found a script that controls the pistons to this fine a degree and functions how I want it to. So it's kind of what I'm stuck with for now. But there we go, we've got the top position, which means we should be able to set up a button to get us here. But we're not exactly lined up to this connector, are we? Though I don't think we need to be. I think we might even take advantage of the fact that we're halfway between two blocks to make the platform at this end really snug to the passenger tram. So I'm actually going to leave that exactly as it is. For designing the passenger tram, I think I'm going to have to design both the platform and tram together so that I've got the ability to change one to the other. Uh, to adapt each so that they come together as nicely as possible. I think what we might do is get a head start on building the tram for next time. So let's create a blueprint of this tram, which I haven't named, so let's name it first. Uh, I don't have a clever name for this in mind. Well, this is our first tram, so I'm going to call it Thomas. Whoops, that's not how you spell Thomas. That is Thomas the Tram Engine. Alrighty, let's take a blueprint to Thomas now. The reason I want a blueprint is because I really don't want to have to figure out how to set up all the wheels again. And hopefully, by building from a blueprint, I won't have to. So let's head back to our main base. Hopefully don't die along the... Oh, I've left all my hydrogen bottles. Oh, I've got two on me, it's fine. Might leave that connector there. And... Start with a rotor on top of it. Oh, hang on a second. I think I'm getting ahead of myself. Oh well, that's fine. We'll set this up and then I'll go back. There's one more thing I want to do up at the other end before we get too much further down here. Off on, see that it's the right one. This is going to be tram projector. Blueprints. Thomas. Okay. And I'm not worried about that multiple grids warning because I seem to have selected the wrong... Oh, what the heck? Has that given me like... Arr. What? Hang on, Thomas. Why did it give... 
it looks like it's actually given me the station's own grid. How is it even... This doesn't make any sense. Control panel, projector, tram projector, blueprints, Thomas, okay. It's given me this station, hasn't it? Oh no, that's the whole, oh that's the base of the solar axe. Oh, okie dokie, we need to remake that blueprint. <laughs> It's given me the whole solar axe. I thought because of the shape of it, and I'd missed, I just totally didn't see the lights. The shape of it looked like the shape of the entry to this tunnel from the main base. So I thought it had somehow given me the main base, which made no sense. That it's given me the solar axe makes a little more sense because it is currently locked to it by a connector, which I probably should have remembered to disconnect. And fly back down the tunnel again. I wonder if the Ugly Duckling's ever going to make it back home, back to the main base, or whether it's going to stay at the Solar Axe until I actually get its plinth ready for its museum display. Let's try this one more time, and hopefully I've got it right this time. Huzzah! It has worked. Now we've just got to line it up. Hopefully I'll be able to get this to work, but I think... Got ahead of myself, had to remove the projector, because we need the ability to... And let's give ourselves a bit of space. We need to be able to move this thing left and right and up and down so that we can place all of the wheels before we detach it from our rotor. Because otherwise we're not going to be able to place all of our wheels on. And now we can put a projector there. And that'll give us that ability to control our movement. There we go, something like that. And then we'll be able to build the frame off our projection. The frame and all of the wheels. And that was going to make setting this up so much quicker. What I should probably try and remember to do is once I have the frame built, blueprint that so that it's a bit easier to project out rather than having all of the extra paraphernalia that's on Thomas. Okay, we've got a drifting pursuant coming in. Oh, that's something. Hmm. I wonder. I wonder if I could get one built quickly enough. I don't think I would. I'm thinking we need some more... Well, we either need a Rudolph so that we can launch it at one of these drifting pursuants. In fact, that's something I really want to do is launch a Rudolph at one of them. Let's <laughs> see if I can take it out before it even gets to us. Hitting a moving target might be an interesting challenge. But also... We need another chicken hawk. I haven't replaced it since I lost it. Because we really should be out there dogfighting these things before they get close to the base. Rather than letting them get all the way here and having to use our base defenses to take them out. And that's something I definitely have to do next time. While designing the tram, I'm going to get another Rudolph and another chicken hawk. So that when we get our next attack from the Drifting Pursuance, we can take them on. And I don't really want to run back up to the Solar Axe right now, since those are going to come after me. I was going to start setting up the Solar Axe so that it had the battery load and unload system set up. But I suppose I could design them here first. Or give a rough idea of what I'm thinking here first. I haven't decided how to incorporate it into this station. I think I probably need like a cargo station that you pass through before you go into the main passenger station. Because so I didn't really design this thinking it was going to end up becoming the extravaganza that it's become. I kind of felt it was just going to be a one-off station. Um, so... The general idea of the battery load and unload is a single piston loaded off to the side. Possibly it'll be more deeply embedded than this, but a piston off to the side like that. Then on the end of the piston, we will have a merge block. Probably oriented like... 
this. Then, since I can't attach another merge block to this one, I will cheat and go da da da, place it like that. Then I'll have another merge block in the middle of this, and on either side have a battery. So that'll be our unit. We'll have two batteries attached to a merge block. This will be able to slot into the center of the tram and get locked down by landing gear. Then we disconnect the merge blocks and with the merge blocks disconnected, we can drive off with our battery, take it to whichever base it needs to be taken to, either the solar axe for charging or back to the main base or the silo to provide them with power and swap it out for an empty battery down at the other end so we can move these battery units back and forth as their charge gets used up. And I think that'll be kind of a nice way of physically moving battery components to recharge these bases. We could certainly figure out a way to combine all of these grids so the solar axe is directly connected to the main base and same to the silo. But where's the fun in that? That'd be too easy. This actually gives the tram a specific mechanical purpose and it'll do this more safe, it'll move these batteries more safely than we'd be able to fly them since we are completely invulnerable to the drones down here. So we won't lose our power setup. So I think we're pretty well set up for next time. We've got our projector ready to go. We've got our plans in terms of getting a chicken hawk built, and I think the easiest way to do that is going to be using our projector on the back of the nugget and flying it into our welding wall to get another chicken hawk. This chicken hawk might get a few upgrades too, because the last one was pretty dang ugly. Is that welder wall still on? Oh jeez it is. Wait. I wonder how much power they're using up. Help others. So I just noticed something for the first time ever. And I'm <laughs> slightly embarrassed that it's the first time I've ever noticed it. This. Help others. It's an unchecked checkbox by default for welders. I always just assumed if I had a welder wall and they had a crossover of effect ranges that both would weld something. This implies that it doesn't. If anyone's actually checked that or knows exactly how this works, I'd be keen to find out. I do wonder what performance impact it may have, because I presume that's why it's turned off. But that is interesting. So next time, get the nugget, build a chicken hawk, take out that drifting pursuant that's out there, build a Rudolph over at the silo, be ready to launch it to take on something else, and build ourselves a tram. So there's that, and plenty more to come, and I'll see you then.